<laughs> well hello 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 welcome welcome come on in come on in and join me hope you had a really good week as you can hear I'm uh, at a very very uh, famous junction on the network and I'll show you that now over here we have the a good old Trenton Mersey Up there, we have the Middle Ridge branch of the Shropshire Union. And right in between, we have the, probably the shortest canal in the UK, the Wardle Canal. So that's where I am today. Where are you? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> that's cheeky that is <clears throat> right okay so here we are then on this lovely beautiful morning here at the end of September and today's video is all about my cruise from Topwas which is quite some distance away from where I am now I, do you know what? Over the last two weeks, I have met so many lovely, lovely people. So many that I really want to mention all their names, but to do that will take me an awful long time. So I thought I'd kick off by saying hi to Martin, Emma, and Ernie. <laughs> Ernie's a dog, by the way, on the lovely boat Digaloo. I happened to meet them when I was on the Trenton Mersey. We had a great time playing narrowboat leapfrog until I got to Tixel wide when they went one way and I went the other. But they are a lovely couple and if you see them out and about on their boat Digaloo, please say hi from Ian, okay? Great, thank you. Uh, there were just so many other people that I am going to mention them as and when I come to that part of the journey. But because I don't want to forget them all. I'm going to put a quick credit at the end of this uh, episode today, uh, mentioning their names. And if I've missed you, then hollow out and tell me, please. So it's a bit noisy up here. Not like being on the canals where it's nice and quiet and relaxing. So let's get on. Let's have a lovely cruise and I'll catch you at the end. So it's time to leave for uh, the 48 hour moorings at Hopwas. As we say goodbye to these uh, lovely couple of pups and this idyllic village mooring scene, I can't help wishing that my grandchildren were with me at this moment in time. I've been transported back to when I was a child, when my grandparents would take me to a, a little pub like this, where I'd be given a packet of crisps, a bottle of drink, fizzy pop of course, and a straw.
scenery here is absolutely stunning and the village itself wow beautiful On leaving the village, we enter the Hopwas Wood. Now, mooring up is not allowed here, and access from the canal is forbidden, as these are firing ranges. However, public may use a bridle path which goes through the woods. It starts at the bridge that we've just gone under and continues to Whitterton Village which is the destination of this video. We are warned to follow the route of the bridle path only and not to stray into the firing ranges where soldiers do dry training including the use of blank ammunition. We have been warned. A full list of firing dates can be obtained from their website. Look up Whittington Firing Ranges on Google.
I've driven through Staffordshire many, many times over the years, but never realised how beautiful the countryside is around here.
20, line bend, you cut him back. Some facts about Whittington. Whittington is a village and lies approximately three miles southeast of Litchfield. According to the 2001 census, it had just over two and a half of thousand inhabitants. Whittington Heath was the site of the Litchfield races, which moved from Fradley in 1702. And during the 18th century, they were one of the largest and well-attended race meetings in the Midlands. Sadly, in the 19th century, the popularity of the races dwindled and as the military use of the heath was growing in 1895 the war office declared it was undesirable to hold a race meeting at the gate of the barracks <laughs> The grandstand subsequently became a soldier's home before it was purchased in 1957 by Whitson Heath Golf Course as their clubhouse. Arriving at the last bridge on the Birmingham and Faisley Canal. This is signified by the names across the bridge instead of numbers.
the name of Thomas Spencer invested £300 in a business venture with a certain Michael Marx. Together they formed Marx and Spencer. And after building a hugely successful retail business, Mr. Spencer retired to pursue his love of farming. So in 1903, he and his wife Agnes moved to the High Hill Farm on Darnford Lane. Sadly, he died two years later at the young age of 53. The centre of the village is about a 10 minute walk away from these moorings. So there we go then. Oh my word. What fun I'm having. Oh, this is great. This is a great life. I can really recommend um, cruising, continuous cruising in your retirement. Oh dear. Some of the sights you see, some of the things you do. Oh, it's amazing. It's just, it's just it's, you can't put it into words sometimes. Anyway, I gotta thank you all. Thank you all to those new subscribers I've got and the lovely messages I've been getting. I've been getting some really lovely messages. Thank you so much, every one of you. Thank you indeed. You, it does mean an awful lot to me that there are so many people out there who enjoy my little ramblings every week. <laughs> anyway. I'm wishing you all a very pleasant week. If you've not already subscribed even, don't forget to press the button and ring that bell. And until we meet again next week, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll see you then. Ta-da!